Thanks a lot, Will. <coughs> okay, so bearing in mind what we've just learned, and bearing in mind the fact that you can save someone's life for three hundred pounds, um, basically we're going to ask the question: How can you save the most lives? Um, that's obviously not the be-all and end-all of doing good in the world, saving lives, but you know we haven't come across any better intervention than saving someone's life for three hundred pounds. That's pretty incredible. And saving someone's life is normally one of the nicest things you can do for them. So we're just going to run with this idea and see how you can save the most. So we've, we've gone back to our four categories. And from what Will said, direct benefiting is probably not going to be the most high impact for most people. So I'm going to look at the other three categories. And we'll start with money making. So... Obviously, by pursuing some careers, you can make huge amounts of money. And we've been doing a quick survey of these estimates of average lifetime salary for various careers. And there's lots of useful information on prospects.ac.uk um, if you want to look up your, your favourite career. And I, I just estimated the, um, the progression through the different pay scales. So down there we've got the median salary, 21, about 21,500. And then... Double from that, you've got tutorial fellow jobs. So that's what Toby's going to make, hopefully what Will's going to make. Um, and then, uh, and like things like uh, private school teachers. And then you go up roughly a factor of 10 to these kind of careers, uh, the, the low end of law, um, management consultants, and investment analysts, which is actually, I've been made a job offer in investment as an investment analyst. So one of my motivations for doing this talk was, you know, should I earn 10 times as much as well, but do something which like, has no benefit to society? Um, and then, of course, there's another factor of 10 up to these kind of careers. So investment analyst leads to fund manager. That's another factor of 10. Also, you've got company CEOs, department heads, um, financial traders, and and I haven't put it on the graph because I didn't remember to see anything else, but, oh, it's been removed. Um, so, uh, oh, there we go. Okay. So it's another factor of 10, owning a hedge fund. And another factor of 10, again, you know, owning a, a business which succeeds, uh, which is a paradigm example. Some career paths offer a small chance of making really, really large amounts of money, um, potentially in the billions. But maybe, you know, we don't really know what the chance of you becoming the next Bill Gates is, but it's probably pretty small. So you might then want to go back to some career paths offer an extremely high chance of making a pretty good salary. So a great example is a doctor, once you've qualified, you're basically going to make a pretty reasonable wage. We reckon about three and a half million over your career, which is another two times the academic. So we're now like twice the median salary, then twice again, so it's four times the median salary. And that means Will was hoping to save about 3,000 lives in his career. But of course, if you earn twice as much, you can save twice as many lives, and you can live on twice as much income. Or, alternatively, you could live on the same amount as well and save more than twice as many lives. So it's just bear worth bearing in mind we're talking about like multiples at each stage. It's not just a small like 10% increase. Double, triple, and so on. And then finally, there's the careers which probably, we reckon, um, offer the best chance of making money, which is they start with high certainty of good salaries, like doctor scale salaries, um, but they still offer a small chance of making really large amounts of money. So the starting salary in finance and consulting is 40 to 50,000, so that's already at tutorial fellow at Oxford levels, and that's your first year. So that's the, min that's the worst case scenario, is you'll learn as much as an academic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and of course, there's a tail. So um, we've, we've asked, this is a 30-year career through investment banking. Um, you're starting at the 50,000 range. And even these low levels, that's actually a tenfold increase. You see up to the half a million range. And then, of course, once you've been there for, say, you, I mean, you're going to have to really work hard, but after 10, you know, we're talking like 90 hour weeks, but you've got the, <laughs> so you've got these like op op opportunities to earn millions per year, and of course that's uh, 
that's um, ten times. That's ten times an academic. So that means um, that means ten times as many lives. So with these careers, even if you level out low down, if you're poorly paid for investment banker, management consultant, investment analyst, trader, barrister, your lifetime earnings are still going to be about six six million, which is four times the academic. So that's about 12,000 lives if you donate them to that, if you donate that to the TV charity, and you still keep around 100,000 per year to live on. And of course, you've still got the option of making tens of millions. Um, so we think this is actually a pretty attractive option if you want to make a difference, and a cu couple of reasons. Firstly, for most of us here, that kind of like getting a medium level job in, in management consultancy is actually basically attainable. So if you get a 2-1 from Oxford and you go for it, it it's an option for us. Um, and it's relatively high certainty, like you can quantify the benefits and you know, once you've donated the money, that's basically in the bag. Um, so that deserves, that deserves some kind of higher weighting, unlike most forms of kind of career impact which is some of the other things we're going to talk about later. Um, and also, it's flexible, so it's money, so you can spend it on anything. As soon as we know a more cost-effective charity, you can just switch. Um, or if we found something totally different, like funding political change, then you just switch into that. So we'll use this as a kind of baseline to compare other careers with. And uh, yeah, it's worth doing the same. So if you're thinking through your options, you think about how much money can I make, and then compare your other options to that, and then you can try to weigh them up. Uh, so it's just we've actually got a couple of points to kind of carry on from Will's section of the talk, which is watch out for the sunk cost fallacy. You might have spent a couple of years in certain path um, doing doing a subject or training for something, but you just got to make sure that. The future decisions actually depend on prospective costs against benefits. Um, the sunk costs have already gone. Um, so in some cases, you might decide, actually, I can have more impact just totally changing what I'm doing and doing something else. Um, and giving what we can member, Mark Lee has quit philosophy <laughs> and tra started training to become a corporate lawyer. Um, so he's taken the money-making route. OK, so. We'll go on to the second, the second area, which is research. And the first thing worth pointing out is that researchers have probably, there's probably some researchers who are among the kind of most high impact people to have ever lived. And one candidate for that is um, Paul Aug, I think it's pronounced. And he developed disease resistant wheat strains. And from 65 to 70, 1970, he doubled the wheat, caused the doubling in the wheat yields in India and Pakistan, and turned Mexico into a net, a net exporter of wheat. And people, people reckon that he saved about 250 million lives um, from, from, from hunger, from starvation. Um, but sometimes people put the figure as high as a billion. And even if we consider that someone would have eventually come along and done that research, he's probably he's probably saved tens of millions of lives. So that's like a hundredfold a really high paid banker giving away almost all of his money. So it's just worth bearing this in mind. But there are some problems. <laughs> 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 Lots of research isn't much use. And even if you think your research might be, there's a chance that it ends up, ends up not being any use. And if it's speculative metaphysics, almost certainly not. <laughs> <laughs> and for most people, there is a really significant problem with the marginal benefit problem, which is what Will talked about. The person who would come along and replace you, fill that academic post, is probably almost as good as you. You know, they, they failed at the interview, but they're only marginally behind you. In fact, they might be better than you. So there's a marginal benefit problem. And the, the particularly interesting thing is um, they've looked at the statistical distribution of paper citations. So 
on, on the bottom we've got the rank, so they put all the papers in order, and then on the other side they've got the number of citations that paper got. And it, 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 the distribution follows a power law. So it's, there are two log scales, and what that means is that you have to write it in a normal axis, it would be like this, so it's like the world income distribution graph. And roughly what this means is that the people up to here, that's 10 to the 2, so that's actually the top 0.01% of, um, of papers. They get 100 to 1,000 times more citations than the median paper. The median academic paper is around here. So there's this incredibly small number of scientists who are like a thousand times more effective than people below the median, which is half the scientists, most of the scientists. So you've got to bear this in mind that you're probably not going to be in the top 0.01% of your field. I mean, there is a chance you'll be there, so that worth, that's worth bearing in mind, but most scientists um, aren't really doing that much good compared to the top scientists. And you've got to watch out for bias, bias here. This is actually, again, another error which people commonly make when thinking about careers. In fact, when thinking about everything, um, all kinds of studies show that humans are just overconfident repeatedly and predictably, even when they've been told that they're going to be overconfident. Um, so we've got some examples. 87% of a sample of confident Stanford MBA students rated themselves above the median in terms of academic performance. And probably more damningly, 25% of a sample of SAT takers put themselves in the top 1% for leadership ability. So you would expect 1% of people to say that if they had any grasp on how good they were actually. But actually it's 25 times more than that. And a really good example is, I know about all this, and we estimated there was a 90% chance that more than 30 people would come to this talk. And only 28 <laughs> people came. So... <laughs> 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 okay, so just to conclude the research section, a money making can save about 12,000 lives, so you basically need to be thinking, like, am I in that ballpark with my research? Um, and we reckon to have a chance of being that high impact, you need to be near the top of, you, near the top of your year in, in terms of that academic. Year. Not necessarily the smartest, but willing to be like the most dedicated, basically, that's what studies show really differentiates the, the really top researchers. And also consider retraining and working on high impact area. And we've got some suggestions. Cost effectiveness research, which is what Will has been involved in. Policy development, which can help the developing world. Development economics, ethics, which Will and Toby also research. Medical research, certain types of technology. So those are some areas to think about. And a case study, a kind of friend of giving what we can, was he trained as an architect. This is also an example of um, the sunk cost fallacy. He trained as an architect, then he discovered the Disease Controls Priorities Project, which is um, a huge book evaluating cost effectiveness of various health interventions. And uh, it's apparently what Bill Gates has next to his bed. Um, so uh, he discovered this, thought this was amazing. And he quit architecture, retrained as an economist, and then worked on the second edition, the DCP. So that's, that's probably an example of high-impact research. So the moral. You think you can kind of, if you've got a chance at the top, consider going into high-value research and be prepared to switch fields. <laughs>